Great. Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started here uh, with our chat with Minwasha Lodge. So thank you all for joining us this evening. Before we get started, I'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. We pay respect to the Algonquin people who are the traditional guardians of this land. We acknowledge their longstanding relationship with this territory, which remains unceded. We pay respect to all Indigenous people in this region from all nations across Canada who call Ottawa home. We acknowledge the traditional knowledge keepers, both young and old, and we honour their courageous leaders, past, present and future. Thank you all for joining us for this important discussion this evening, and I will introduce our guest in a moment. When we planned this Indigenous History Month with Minwash and Lodge, it was under quite different circumstances. 10 days ago, the mass atrocity of systemic racism, which ultimately resulted in genocide in Canada was revealed and confirmed starkly. At that time, we reached out to Minwash and Lodge to offer space and time and reschedule as needed. And we thank our guests this evening for agreeing to move forward as planned. Before I introduce our guests to all of you, I'd first like to offer the gift of a tobacco tie on behalf of myself and Shelter Movers Ottawa as a symbol of our gratitude for ongoing partnership and your participation this evening. It is our honor to introduce Grandmother Irene Compton, who is Soto from the Assiniboine Territory, but now makes this Algonquin Territory her home. She will be opening our gathering with a song to invite the ancestors in and create a safe space. Thank you for that nice introduction. Um, so we're going to open up this gathering with a smudge and I'm going to sing the Eagle song. So. At all our gatherings, we always use the medicines before we start. And that's, of course, to create safe space. But um, so this is the medicines I just lit. It's sage. And whoa, the flame is high. That means we're going to have a good gathering here. Those spirits really want to talk. OK, so we smudge. And what we do is we, we smudge our mind so that we will have clarity and understanding. And we smudge our ears so that we can open up our ears for listening. And we smudge our mouth so that we say good things. And we smudge our heart so that we will feel good things. And we smudge our tummy because that is the seat of all our emotions. That's where all our emotions sit. So. When we do this smudging, it grounds us to Mother Earth. And when we are in that sacred space, then all those ancestors will come and be with us. I invite you to invite your own ancestors as well. Whatever nations you're from, from the white nations, the black nations, the Middle Eastern nations, uh, the indigenous nations, I invite you to, you know who your own ancestors are. So I invite you to ask them to come and visit with us to be with us. So I'm going to do four honor beats. And this is called the Eagle Song. And why we sing the Eagle Song is because uh, the Eagle is the one that carries our prayers, that flies closest to the Creator and carries our prayers to, to the Creator. And so whatever is on your heart and your mind today, I ask you to put those prayers onto the wings of that Eagle. So I'm going to do four honor beats and then I'll teach you the chorus of the song and then we'll go into the song. We're going to sing to each direction you'll see behind me, my medicine wheel. So we're going to travel around that medicine wheel with each round. So this is the chorus of the song. It goes like this. Yeah, hey. Southern direction, and that is where 
Thank you so much for that and welcome. Mm -hmm. My honor. Great. So thank you so much. We have uh, a lot of things to talk about tonight and partnership and, and sharing uh, support for women is, is at, at its core. And before we chat, I think it's also important to acknowledge that this month is the two year anniversary of the release of the missing and murdered indigenous women and children women and girls final report which was in 2019 and those findings confirm uh, that uh, indigenous rights violations and abuses are the root cause behind Canada's staggering rates of violence for indigenous women girls and 2s lgbtq plus people and those occurrences are what really bring us uh, together tonight with Minwash and Lodge this evening for both our organizations provide support to these and services for women and children experiencing gender-based violence. And it's an important partnership to us and was one of our first partnerships back in October, 2017. We still stand together today in supporting the women that walk into our doors. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight and explore that relationship and, and why it's important and, and where everything comes together. So um, Grandmother Irene, I have a few questions, but I, I know you mm -hmm. have a few things as well. So mm -hmm. we can get started with some questions. There may be some from the audience as well. There's some people online who are watching those coming along. Um, so it, I guess a, a good starting point is for everyone to understand where do the women that come to Minwashin Lodge, uh, where do they come from? Are they from the immediate community? Are they from further outside of Ottawa? What would be the dem well, demographics of who you serve? Yeah, well, actually, Ottawa, you know, is in the pretty well uh, close to the middle of Canada. And so a lot of Indigenous uh, families come from out west. Most, a lot of Inuit families come from the north. And so there's a, a melting pot of a, a lot of different nations here. Uh, I mean, uh, there's even some American nations here. We've had American uh, uh, Native people come up uh, from the United States and they're in crisis. So, but a lot I can say for Ottawa is Inuit because they have a, a, the biggest population uh, in the North uh, that are, are migrating to a uh, big city. And this one and the one in Winnipeg has the most uh, population of Inuit people coming into the urban center. Okay, and that it, it obviously it, it uh, forces you to really think of different kinds of barriers that that uh, people coming in your doors may be may be facing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the partnership that we have with Shelter Movers in Minwash and Lodge now that's been going on for some time. What what's important about that relationship? What's important for people to know and understand about that relationship? Well, yeah, it's really important because, you know, when a woman is, is in crisis and she's in the shelter 
the last thing she needs to worry about is how am I going to get my furniture moved to the apartment? I mean, there's so much trauma upon trauma and trauma while they're, while they're in the shelter. And so I'm really glad that this program came along in 2017. There was certainly a, a need for it. And we used to really struggle a lot. I mean, I remember getting my husband with his big uh, truck to move a couple of women. And I mean, we couldn't move everything. We just moved maybe a mattress and a coffee table or something like that. But it was it was pretty, and there was no, uh, there was no resources to move women. You know, I mean, a, a moving truck costs a lot. Uh -huh. Movers cost a lot. So women would get their places and they would worry and worry about, okay, how am I gonna move? <laughs> so, and it becomes the barrier, right? It becomes that oh, yeah. reason they don't move or they don't leave because they can't afford the move. They can't afford new furniture if they leave everything behind. Um, yeah, we see a lot. And I think the geography of your, uh, the people who you serve is important too. We've done some moves all the way to Gananoque and up into on the Quebec side as well and, and really seeing where uh, the reach is um, and mm -hmm. where the need is. Um, there's some partner organizations that I think you also work with and we work with as well. So helping with furniture. So when a woman does need to leave things behind and can't get into her home uh, with her new home with, uh, with some supplies, we uh, work with that great organization to let them go shopping and find things that have been uh, donated by other people as well um, to make yeah. them feel safe. And Minwash and Lodge has um, storage like diamond storage where we, we buy things throughout the year just to have something on hand all the time mm -hmm. it's been a really interesting partnership to be able to work together and learn together about what the needs are and readjust and and make those changes along the way because we definitely are always learning at shelter movers and figuring out the best way to do things and the best way to approach things and um the the concept of going out with your husband's truck is one that many people uh have experienced i don't know how many times i've gotten you know that call of i've got to go and i've got to go now okay mm -hmm. we're gonna go now if it's gonna be in my little chevette it's gonna be in my little chevette <laughs> um, uh, but that's that's why it's great to have the 300 and some odd volunteers that we have in our roster an incredible team on the ground that uh that makes it run and your team as well um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of statistics out there around domestic violence and uh, who is most at risk. Um, and it's become very, very evident um, through some research that Indigenous people of this line are more than twice as likely to experience spousal violence. And could you speak to some of the issues and the additional barriers that Indigenous women may have? So things that, that, that might be different or, or cause or, or force towards that um, and how we might be able to overcome them. Well, you know, we're seeing a lot of women coming to our shelter uh, because their children, their children are at risk. Uh, their partners are uh, very abusive, all different types of abuse, verbal, financial, uh, sexual, emotional abuse. And oftentimes a woman is just feels really trapped. And so, you know, it's really important that there are shelters in the city of Ottawa to be able to assist women in, when, in their time of need. And just to let you know, um, Osh, we have we have been Wash and Lodge, but we also have a shelter, which is Oshkakesis Lodge. And now we are the only Indigenous shelter in the city of Ottawa for Indigenous women. So we have like 22 beds. Wow. So, yeah, so, you know, there's a need for more shelters uh, in Ottawa, more Indigenous shelters. I'd like to see one you know, one for First Nations, one for Inuit, one for Métis. I would love to see that. That would be a, a nice uh, goal to reach. Um, and, you know, a lot of these women, they're not only facing um, abuse, uh, domestic abuse, but there's, you know, a lot of them are homeless and they've gotten into addictions or uh, they've been kicked out by their boyfriend for whatever reason and, and you know, they have no place to go. And, Oftentimes, uh, people are coming from up north and they have to leave their community right away because uh, there's, you know, intertwined um, traumas happening between the families um, and they have to get out. So uh, a lot of them, uh, we'll get them airlifted from, from up north and 
brought to brought to Ottawa. So you're working closely with those communities remotely uh, to bring women into Ottawa to get away is often the case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, yeah, that's all. That's I mean, a lot, a lot of also, them yeah. they come down for medical reasons with their families, but then they end up staying because okay, they stay down south. So then you know they 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 need to they need to stay somewhere. And I mean, often they're escaping. They're escaping a lot of abuses from their homes in, in, up north. And so they're glad to get here, but then when they get here, it's like culture shock. And then, you know, sometimes they can get caught up with uh, other people that are not so healthy. And then they start, they start, you know, going down that road that's not- a decline. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't it's, take very long uh, once they land here. Yeah, it's very, very tough. I mean, I can't imagine, I mean, the most stressful times in people's lives are uh, in someone who's not experiencing abuse is, you know, getting married, move, buying a new home, um, and, and and those kinds of things, and 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 are moving to a new city. And these women are moving to a new city um, in the middle of an abusive situation, which adds um, mm -hmm. adds to that exponentially. So, definitely incredible that your supports are there, that they have someone on the ground that they can connect with and can uh, find services. So, so what other services does Minwash and Lodge offer? So, there's the shelter uh, mm -hmm. piece, but what other services are offered by Minwash and Lodge? Well, we have a main facility um, close to uh, St. Laurent Mall. And so we offer services for every stage of life. So we start with the children. So we have a sacred child uh, children's program. And uh, that's where we assist a lot of women um, with getting their children back from CAS mostly. That's one of the big issues that we have. And, but, you know, we are trying to develop new practices, new ways of doing things that are good for both uh, uh, institutions. And like, we're just at the beginning, right? We're just at the beginning of change. So to, to change systemic change takes a lot of time. So, you know, that's where we're at with that. And, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. What were you asking? <laughs> Just about the other services that Minwash and Lodge offers. Okay. But I think that, 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 that you know, it, it, systemic change does take generations and we're mm -hmm. seeing that. And we're seeing that it's still not, it's even after many, many generations, it's still not being rectified. Mm -hmm. So definitely having the services available um, yeah. is so necessary. And we have a youth program too. So that's where we go out to the schools and talk to the youth about all kinds of things, you know, depression, whatever they're dealing with. There, a lot of uh, youth want, want to connect to the culture and a lot of youth don't have their culture. People think that native people already know their ways and their language. That is, that is the most largest thing from the truth. We are we're in the process of reclamation right now. We are trying to get all those things back. And uh, so, you know, it's really important that we start with the youth because those are the movers and shakers for the next <laughs> seven generations, right? It's not us. <laughs> if they're strong culturally, they'll be strong leaders in, in the community and make those changes. And we also have a big counseling unit. We have, we employ about, I think we employ about 10 counselors. You know, wow. Yeah, dealing with uh, all kinds of trauma, sexual abuse, um, uh, family violence, um, there's so many impacts of trauma within our community that we're dealing with right now. And so we have a big counseling team and we offer contemporary counseling as well as indigenous um, culturally based counseling. So it's really important that we start with the women in that way. And we also have a uh, culture program, which is a big part of our center. Uh, this is where women get connected to their culture, their identity and their pride, and they learn new gifts and skills and they, they really come out of their shell and they really feel like they belong to something. Uh, you know, I, I love the culture program because they're always laughing and joking in there and, you know, sitting around doing crafts and things like that. The grandmothers come in with, and so there's all stages of life in there too. So, you know, and our culture is one of the ways that we heal but also our culture gives us confidence. So it's really important that we know who we are, 
what our purpose in life is going to be and how we walk in this world. And, and a lot of us have to walk between two worlds. So that's the non-Indigenous and the Indigenous world. So what is the balance there? How do, how do I walk? in a good way in, in both of these worlds. So yeah, that's our culture program. And then we also have an employment program. We have an employment unit over here. And that took uh, some time, like we've been, we've been in existence for 20, I'm the co-founder and 28 years. Uh, I remember, you know, we started off in Chinatown with two rooms, no clients. And <laughs> we had to go out in the community and tell people that we were here to prevent violence. Well, <laughs> what violence? They would say, even the in people slammed the doors in our faces. But that was then, and now, you know, we're starting to get more educated about that. And now, I mean, we are leaders in our community. Uh, we are, we consider ourselves the healers of the community because, you know, that's that's what we do. We're we're the women. Women are nurturers. They teach. They they heal. So that's what Minwashan Lodge is in the community. That is known as the healers in the community. I can't think of a better way to, to connect with us. Sorry, I was going to tell a little bit more about the. Mm -hmm. um, so we have. Uh, I I do an employment readiness program, getting women. Really, it's all about motivation and confidence. Try, trying to get them to feel good about themselves, to feel worthy, and to feel motivated to, you know, go back to school or get a job or just, you know, belong to a, a group of women where they're talking about their hopes and their dreams and, and they're actually taking baby steps towards that. Yeah. And that's probably, probably for the first time feeling that there is a future, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, oh yeah, well, there's other, we have our storm van, uh, street outreach mobile uh, van, and that, so we assist uh, a, a lot of women on the street, like, they, it, they're really uh, glad that we're out there, especially uh, in different parts of the city, they know that our van is just around the corner if they need help, or if they need information, or if they need, we, we give out hygiene supplies, food, bus tickets uh and and also but we're also there to assist them if if they're in crisis and they want to come into our shelter it's you you're covering the entire spectrum which is so important especially um, when you're dealing with people experiencing violence you just don't know which intervention that is going to be the best support mm -hmm. but i really yeah, and, love and the long idea before human track human trafficking uh is getting more popular now but long before that we we started this storm down like 2002 or 2003. Yeah. I remember my, uh, the executive director standing up in the city of Ottawa meeting and say, we, we have to have a program. Well, she called them sex trade workers uh, because they are, they are dying out on the street. And that's what came out of it was her storm van. Incredible. I think that the, the strength that has been behind the development of Minwash and Lodge is quite interesting. Uh, many, many, many years ago, I worked for a bank in Ottawa, and it was many, many years ago at the same time that in Washington Lodge was being founded. And so I remember the partnership that we built originally when when things first started, and it was amazing to see the organization grow. And I only realized that uh, as we were starting to book this, and I, I put two and two together, and we were one of the at the time one of the founders, uh, one of the founding funders, to give you give you some money to get things started. So um, I remember writing the checks. So it's, it was, it was oh, an amazing really? experience to watch this and now I'm hearing all of this work that's been done and hearing about the storm van and all of the other pieces that have come together. And I think it really is meaningful that now I'm at Shelter Movers and now getting a chance to work with Minwash and Lodge again. So um, congratulations on the work that has been achieved. And mm -hmm. I love the idea of Minwash and being a healer of the community and it tru you truly are. Mm -hmm. And in the work that's being done across without any prejudice without any judgment. It is, if you walk in the door, um, the support is there. And support yeah. that is helping people find their culture again too, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, congratulations. Really important. Is there anything that you, uh, anything else that you want people to know about Minwash and Lodge or the experience of the women that you, that you serve? Yeah, so, you know, 
when we first started in Wash and Lodge, uh, we were stumbling around because we really didn't know how to get the place off the ground. But what helped us was a lot of non-Aboriginal women. They came, they came together. They wrote proposals for us because we didn't have those skills at the time. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to see us thrive and they really wanted us to succeed. So I always, you know, remember those women and how beautiful, they were beautiful, educated women that wanted to make a, a difference for Indigenous women. And so they, they, all, they helped us all at that time. And so it's, you know, it's really important that we have our allies. That now, now they call them allies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that they were there back then too. And yeah. And also, um, like I said, we were, you know, we were faced with a lot of challenges, uh, not being validated in the community and being, they were suspicious of us. What are those uh, women doing over there giving us all kinds of not so nice labels? And so we had to do a lot of education. We had to do, we did what was called a community wheel where we went out to different organizations we said we're here and this is what we do and we're we're going to uh we're we're, we're here for indigenous women and slowly you know the community started to come around okay and then before you know it we started getting referrals and but that was really good because we then we started to get known as uh the place where the women go to get the help and you know we had uh, we had to do a lot of uh, safety planning with the women, and uh, you know, a lot of years of counseling, years of undoing all that trauma, and you know, and then building them back up with the culture. And we have, there's we have so many success stories, <laughs> <laughs> which is wonderful. But yeah. is there is there a particular individual or story that you that would would hammer that home in terms of 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 the successes that can happen? Well, I just want to share with you uh, recently, um, a woman, she, she came on my employment readiness program and she had six children. And just by coming to the employment readiness program, interacting with the other women and, you know, putting down their, their tobacco in ceremony and ask, asking creator to help them, you know, to build up their life again. And, you know, some women just feel so trapped. They feel like there's no hope and they really put themselves in a lot, which I, you know, I, I understand, but, you know, there has to be uh, a time when, when there's hope. There has to be a time when there's opportunity. And there, so it's really important. Uh, this lady, she thanked me. Uh, she said she was, she had tears and she was, she was just so grateful that that was there was a circle of women that helped her on her journey, and now she is contemplating going to school. It's really just planting seeds, right? It, they're not going to, you know, do leaps and bounds. It's just baby steps. But at least mm -hmm. we've planted that uh, that uh, seed with her, and so she wants she wants to get out into the work world. And yes, she's got six children, but she's gonna she's gonna do it anyway, and. Uh, any kind of support that she needs in Wash and Lodge will give her. That's amazing. Yeah. We see it. We see it on our side. So when we work through a safety plan and get everything in place and get the moves going, and we're we're moving a woman and her children, and they're with us, right? They come with mm -hmm. us. They come with us to pick up the stuff. Their children are there. We're involved in, in getting mm -hmm. them into their new home, and to see the trans the trans transformation, even just in the car from leaving the shelter, being in the vehicle with our teens and mm -hmm. arriving at their new home and the difference in just the shoulders drop and they can mm -hmm. just breathe again. And there's, yeah. there's this, you know, that's that step. And it is amazing. And um, we hear a lot of stories. We hear a lot about the feeling uh, between that finally getting to that final destination. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's incredible. So I can only imagine when they actually finally start to heal further and be able to actually pick other things up like looking for employment or finding ways to support their children through mm -hmm. a variety of ways, whether it's their mental health or, or physical health or any of those things as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. We do have one question from the group and that's how do people support Minwash and Lodge? How can someone support? 
Well, um, we have, we have, well, we don't have any volunteers right now because of COVID, but, mm. uh, you know, people can volunteer, you know, it's just like, um, supporting us, but not appropriating, um, like there is a difference between supporting and, um, appropriating, um, because we have a lot of people that come forward and they don't even know their intentions and why they want to, uh, they want to help. Uh, sometimes there are ulterior motives, but I mean, it becomes pretty clear after a while. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to think of constructive ways. We have, luckily en enough, we have enough professionals now. We employ about <laughs> three women mm -hmm. in Lodge. So, um, you know, attending some of these community events, like we have a women's gathering in the summer, and that's a, lo a, a weekend long of culture, we we start, we open with ceremony, we close with ceremony. Women are uh, going to all kinds of workshops. And they're going to drumming and singing. They're, they're going to crafts, making earrings, uh, little uh, beadworks and things like that. And then we also get teachings from the Inuit and the Métis as well. It's not only First Nations. They can attend a ceremony. They can, uh, there's, um, we have a sacred fire going through the whole weekend. So each woman is responsible for making sure that fire is doesn't go out. So uh, it's around the clock shifts and it's really amazing. Women will stay up all night and they sit around the fire and, and it really uh, heals them. And, and you know, it, when, you when you come away from that women's gathering, it's like you push the reset button uh, like 10 times and you, you really you're good to go for another six months really for sure because you've connected to other women in the community you've connected to mother earth creator um you've connected on all different levels you've connected to yourself really mm. yeah and and you and women can water there they set new priorities for themselves they just feel so, so good. We also take all the women from Washke Keisha's lodger shelter. We have a bus, we rent the bus and bring them all out for the weekend. And uh, what? I, and again, they're like, that makes a big, big uh, difference for them for the whole weekend. So um, also, I guess, um, like there's a lot of uh, events going on right now with around the, uh, uh, truth and Reconciliation, Missing and Murdered and Women, Indigenous. Uh, so there's all kinds of events. There's also, like, so we need we need allies in that way to come and walk with us or uh, whatever, uh, just to come and be with us, to gather with us and to, to acknowledge and to um, you know, advocate for change, right? And so those are the kind of things that uh, our allies can help us with. I mean, I mean, at Christmas time, even just getting a donation of bus tickets for the women helps a lot. Um, yeah, thinking about our community and and you know what would you do to help uh, a mother that's she's in her hotel room now because she's got stuck in there because of COVID uh, restrictions. And she's got children, and it's in a hotel room. And you know, what kinds of helps do you think you could you could support us with? That's great. I think that there's that, that's a lot of powerful things to be involved in. Um, when the women are in the shelter, so you were talking just now about women being in hotel rooms, and they're in there for quite a long time. I, I'm I've been watching and talking to all of our shelter partners and trying mm -hmm. to figure out where and how and what we can do best. But when they actually get Access, as they're coming out of the shelter. So if someone is leaving the shelter, they have either found somewhere safe to go to, or they've been identified for some affordable housing access or those kinds of things. What are the, what are the things that are, what, what are women experiencing at that point in terms of needs or, or things that, that could support them at that point? So what's happening or what are the barriers well, at that point? Of course, it's, it's isolation, right? They, they need that lifeline. So that's why, um, they, they're starting to come on Zoom online to our programs even more now. <laughs> mm. and, but I mean, a lot of the women, they don't have access to a computer. So that's a 
big need. So we have we have bought oh, we have bought so many computers uh, lately, and uh, so that that connection is a lifeline for them. You know, some of them need Wi-Fi; they don't even have Wi-Fi. But um, it you know it's it it's to let them know that we care about them, and we care about them. we we know they're in that hotel room with their six children, and and, and it it's it's hard. Gosh. Yeah, it's I mean, it, it's tough when it's in a shelter and they're still in a room, but they have yeah. at least other people to interact with. But at a hotel, there's definitely no one to interact with. Um, yeah. From an affordable housing perspective, do you see um, that as that bottleneck of uh, are you seeing the effects of the bottleneck of affordable housing and not being available in the city? Um, on average, our, our women usually get housed within six months. OK, great. Yeah. So, so we're we're very fortunate that way. Um, yeah, that's great because I think eighteen months is where things are at twelve to eighteen months in some cases in some of the other um, yeah. areas. Yeah, the only ones that don't get housed right away are the ones that are single. Yeah, it takes a little uh, longer to get them housing. Yeah, the priorities aren't there in terms of their mm -hmm. prioritization and the housing list. Um, yeah, that's that is tough. It is one of those things. So, um, in terms of uh, keeping up to date, is your website a good place to go for people to learn? Uh, I think that the the yeah. women's uh, the, the women's um, gathering, gathering it, is it sounds like it's buzzing a little bit in our comments yeah. in terms of it being something really interesting in other ways. Oh yeah, yeah, it's something to connect to the indigenous women uh, uh, culture. Yeah. I feel like it might be an opportunity for some of our team uh, yeah. perhaps to participate in partnership as well. Oh yeah, it's all about healing and wellness and being out on the land and there's water there and just, oh, we feed you all we can, really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's important. Yeah, yeah. And there's, <laughs> lots sounds wonderful. there's lots of tears too, but there's there's healing in those tears, right? It feels like it's a wonderful experience and um i there's not too many i'm looking just to gonna take a quick peek and see if there's some more questions here um i think that there was one question um with it being pride month um does minwash and lodge also serve the 2s lgbtq plus community and is there any unique ways or special ways that you serve that community well i can all i can say is back in the day we had uh a program, LGBTQ program. And actually we were the only ones that had one, well, the indigenous uh, group that, that had one. And, you know, we were funded for maybe four or five years and then the funding got cut. And then, so everything fell away. Um, but I mean, we do serve everybody. So we don't, we don't know who is LGBTQ all the time, but uh, you know, LGBTQ people are respected in our cultures. They are honored and respected because they walk in both of those worlds, male and female, and they have those nurturing qualities. They they were looked to as teachers and caregivers, and uh, so they were they were special. There was no there was no um, stigmatization in our in our communities about them. They were special. So uh, you know, it's really important that we honor we honor them for for who they are because they are they are very special. Um, well, we do Pride Month. We do we have a, a float with Wabano. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> uh, but you know, we don't have any specific LGBT programs right now at Minwash and Lodge. But hopefully, that's going to change with all. The, the announcement of all uh, the, the support uh, the Indigenous communities are going to get. So we certainly do miss our LGBTQ uh, people in our in in. Our, you know. Yeah, and I know that you your 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 the staff actually works with some of the peripheral organizations as well to per, get those peripheral mm -hmm. services as needed. And you have lots of partnerships. You have lots of organizations peripherally that you work with. Yeah. Yeah. 
which is great because it, it shares yeah. it shares the culture across and it, it opens the door for conversation and learning and everything else that goes along with that so yeah. it's uh it, it's you've done an incredible job mm. so thank, thank you, you for coming to the community and thank you for giving that uh this gift to the community is that it's been wash and lodge mm -hmm. um i think we have we don't have any more questions that are coming through um, I do want to let people know that definitely the Minwash and Lodge website is really valuable to go through and, mm -hmm. and, and read and, and see a lot of the stuff that's being offered. Uh, same thing goes for, for shelter movers. We have lots of information on our website uh, and lots of opportunities, and we're going to look forward to really finding ways to partner in, in new ways as we move forward. We're about to expand uh, into the rural community from uh, from Brockville to Cornwall. So I think we're going to have some conversations there as to how we might be able to support further reach into, uh, into uh, the diversity in the community as well and those, that side of things. Um, but lots to come. And uh, mm -hmm. I think right now, I think what will be really lovely is if you were able to um, close us off for the evening. I know you had some mm -hmm. remarks and you had um, a, a closing ceremony that you would like to mm -hmm. share with us. Yes. So, you know, I just want, want to wrap up with a few words. Um, so it, it's a real honor to be here to talk about Minwash and Lodge and how you can support Minwash and Lodge. But, you know, really what it comes down to is that kindness, caring and sharing. And that's part of our culture. Uh, that's what we believe in. We believe in that uh, medicine wheel all those stages of life, all those seasons, all, it's a, it's a complete circle. It's all instructions for life. So to all of you, I would say, stay safe and balance. Make sure you connect to Mother Earth, go out in the sunshine. And hey, we're going to be opening up this weekend. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so everybody's, yeah, everybody's getting a little, a little happier. But you know, this isolation has really taught us a lot. It really has. It, um, sometimes we are brought to our knees in, in, in isolation and desperation. But when, when, we, when Creator pulls us to our knees, that means we have to do things differently and to change. And so I, I actually think it, it, uh, it was a, not a good thing, but it was, it was a good learning experience for, for a lot of people. And yeah, for next time, um, hopefully there is no next time. Yeah, we can we can hope. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, so uh, what was I going to say? This song is uh, the traveling song. So when we lick those medicines and. We asked that ego to take our prayers to Creator, and we invited our ancestors to sit in gathering with us. Now we're coming to the end of this ceremony, and so we're going to close off, and we're going to send all those ancestors home. So I want you to think about all your ancestors, whoever they may be. Could be your grandmother, could be your auntie, could you be your uncle? All those ones that went to the spirit world. When they go to the spirit world they become your helpers and they start when and when you call on them and they visit you and you ask them for help they start arranging good things to happen for you so that's what this song is all about is is thanking them and sending them home so i would like you to close your eyes too if you can think of your own, your own relatives and thank them for being those helpers <clears throat> So it goes like this. We have leads in our song, and the lead in this song is. And then people would sing back.
that western direction. so much grandmother irene yeah it's been, it's been an honor. honor yeah thank you thank you good evening